All right, Alan. This is my basement home theater that I watch for movies and stuff. But I also, it's also a general media room, so I do video games and stuff. So I've got a bunch of speakers and subwoofers and surround and stuff. And Steam. So you're like, oh, okay, I've seen that before. But if you actually go behind the curtain. Don't mind the mess. Home server crap. Hey, so I've recently gotten rid of my GTX 970 because I was due for an upgrade anyway. Um, so this is an AMD RX 580, which I picked up on sale for about 200 bucks. So in America here for like Black Friday, they're starting to drop like a 200 bucks. Um, and a Ryzen R5, 1500, 1600, one generation back. Um, and then this crazy RGB crap is really fast RAM that I found on sale, but it came with this crazy RGB, which I'm not really into. I just think it looks so ridiculous that, I don't know, whatever. It was on sale. So Ryzen, you want to pair with really fast RAM. So that really kind of makes a difference. So I got an R5 1600, 16 gigs of RAM, um, and the RX 580. Um, and then I got a cheap case and I kind of slapped it all together. Um, and it replaced this, which was my old Ubuntu Steam machine, which had a 970, and it was kind of a console case and things like that. But then the power supply died, and a whole bunch of other, other business. So I just kind of scrounged around, grabbed a bunch of parts, grabbed a new GPU, and put it in here. I like to put it back here so you don't see it in the front and stuff. So this is running 1804 with the latest, latest, latest kernel using UK, UKU or whatever that crack rock tool is that you love. Um... And then the Mesa Padoka PPA, which gives me the la latest Mesa. Now, I have experimented with just running 1810 on there with, like, the graphics stack that comes out of it. And I think for most people, they're probably not going to notice the difference. They're just like, oh, okay, it all works. That's fine. And things like that. But I'm kind of following development of all the gaming stuff. So I've, got, I've decided this is going to be the PPA machine. The box upstairs that I made my previous video is kind of a stable machine. This is the crack rock one and since everything in here is basically open drivers you know other than the firmware crap um i don't have to deal with no mode set or anything because it's connected to a projector and that makes computers a pain in the ass because like if i turn it on and i had to you know do a boot parameter i had to run all the way around because the keyboard's actually in the front so what i'm about to show you here pardon the mess i have a kid now by the way all right, so I come here and I sit, uh, and I have, I've actually got a keyboard and stuff over there, but the idea is never to use a keyboard. Um, so this is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's the latest Assassin's Creed game. And the system has two SSDs in it and a four terabyte drive that I've set up in a Bcash configuration. Um, I'm pretty sure I've told you about that before but that's basically grabbing an ssd and a spinning disc and yeah that's a huge ass um wine system tray blown up because i'm using the steam compositor window manager thing so it blows up everything to kind of force it to be full screen mode yes including the wine system tray icon that has you play in it um so in windows this is like normally a small splash screen that shows it's loading in linux it makes it full screen which i guess is kind of cool um and there was a uplay flash but look the game is running so hey so there's a few bugs here i'm going to point out um you might see that the aspect ratio is a little bit weird with black bars on the top and bottom once i fire up the game and that's like a wine config issue uh i'm kind of following it in the bug report um, but hold on, let me get you a brighter screen so that it's obvious there are black bars. Um, so that's just like a wine config issue where I could fix it, but then my controller doesn't work. Um, but the, I'm just following like a bug. There's like a bug report for every game, which I think is handy. Um, and then I turned on this little guy up here. This shows me my frames per second and more importantly, my frame rate. You want that to be flat. If it's spiky, that's when a game gets really stuttery and things like that. So you lose about 15% running a, you know, a AAA game like this. 
as far as I can tell from when I had Windows on this machine, about 15% performance wise. So I kind of make it up by over grunting the hardware um, and running a 1080 and not, um, you know, higher resolutions or things like that. So yeah, I've been playing this through this entire campaign. I've got, um, how many hours? I've got about 25 hours on the campaign. And this is the Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the latest game, like the one that just came out, that people will be playing through Christmas and stuff. Um, and I'm playing it at 1080p. Not quite 60 frames a second. This game is kind of designed for consoles, and getting it to 60 is just a terribly, horribly hard thing to do, even on Windows. Um, so what I did is I cranked up the visual quality, and I locked the frame rate at 30, which is why everything is flat. Um... And the game runs incredible. I mean, it's just fun. So that's that's why I think people are willing to use unsupported tools. And that's why I think people, like, have been asking for more uh, speed as far as getting their um, their software updates and stuff. But, like... I still can't believe this works. I'm still at the point where it's like, wow, this is these are all free drivers. Uh, the game runs... This game in particular is, is kind of interesting because it's very CPU intensive on Windows. I think it's an engine thing. It doesn't use a low-level API, so it's like maxing out DirectX 11. Um, so even on Windows, it's, it's very difficult to get working. But to match console-level performance was actually not that hard. If you lock to 30... Um, that's not a problem with this game with either my 1070 or this 580. The problem with this game is anything Norse of 30 is like when it really, it really like starts to chug. But locking in a 30 is fine, and that's how console players play. I, I wish I could get it up to 60, but I'm not willing to. I just bought that hardware like used and with a good deal. I'm not, I'm not willing to go out and just buy all new hardware to get one game to work. Um, it works really great now. Um, and you've seen my Witcher video and stuff. And so this game was not that hard for a typical Linux user to get working. Um, you know, there's a few gotchas, but they're kind of becoming well documented. So for me, the reason I'm using uh, the UUKU thing is I want to see how the latest kernels and stuff are doing with this. Because now all of a sudden, in a way, it was kind of easier with my NVIDIA card because... I just got a new blob, and then I tested it. Now, this entire experience is tied to my kernel and my... Um, to both my kernel and the Mesa stack. Everything now is now back in distro land as opposed to just a binary PPA. So... Um, but yeah, and you know what? When I had this, I recently moved it back to 18.04 with a PPA, but with 18.10... Um, uh, this could have been 1810 out of the box and you, you wouldn't have noticed a difference. Like, um, if you benchmark it and stuff, yeah, there's improvements happening all the time. But generally speaking, the stack in 1810 is fresh enough where all this is possible. Sorry, I'm just like driving my horse around. So, Yeah, this is what I do on the weekends, man. I hope things are going well with you. I will talk to you later.